So I'm going to do you have the floor, sir. Thank you very, very much, Lady K. Um, and um, I'd like to welcome everyone who has taken time off. Um, usually, I think this is a sacrifice. Saturdays, especially in the, the part of Nigeria, uh, of Africa where Nigeria is located, is meant to be for parties and celebrations and what have you. I think it might be the same in other parts of the world, but you guys uh, religiously set aside this one and a half hours. Um, we, the technical team, do not take it for granted. We appreciate you and welcome you. Um, I think 90% um, of the people I'm seeing on the call today are already familiar with Tatri, in trade and investment global. Uh, you know what we stand for uh, to uh, fill the gap, the knowledge gap. We always said ITC has its own summary about international trade. The International Trade Center, Geneva, describes international trade as fairly competitive and recommends that every country um, should take it as an economic warfare and therefore prepare, I mean, arm its uh, foot soldiers with the most potent uh, weapons they can put in their uh, uh, tool bag, in their arsenal, in order to be able to prosecute this economic uh, battle. The battle simply is for a larger share of the world market in the specific areas, goods and services where each country deems itself to have uh, potential to perform. So I welcome you. We try to uh, bring up issues uh, as they arise, global trends, information, and then especially identify, highlight the challenges that uh, practitioners are likely to uh, face. This enables us to put heads together on this uh, interactive uh, uh, forum once in a month to be able to package, to, uh, uh, to develop solutions, package them and um, assign to whoever uh, it is uh, those solutions address. Of course, our demographics, you all know by now, include policymakers, uh, heads of um, governmental agencies, and then as well as the practitioners and practitioners, and not just those who export goods and services, but also those who make the export happen, including haulage, storage, process, uh, processing, lawyers, and what have you. So um, it's uh, that's what we are for. Um, in case you don't know, uh, Talking Trade and Investment Global is a registered non-for-profit uh, in uh, Canada, and uh, we are hoping that uh, very soon uh, the Nigerian chapter is also going to be incorporated. It's important to know this because uh, um, when you seek to go out to give, to offer um, uh, information and uh, solution, it's more like our own uh, way of offering technical assistance to the uh, respective seg uh, sectors and segments uh, that form our audience. So once again, I want to welcome you all. And um, maybe I should just go straight into introducing today's topic, or do we want to have Tommy and um, uh, Shay bring us an interlude, and then we can go into today's uh, introduction of today's topic. OK, thank you very much. Uh, part one of this segment was uh, held in uh, May, the first Saturday of the month of May. And uh, you would all recall in Nigeria, that was uh, the uh, month during uh, which uh, a new administration was being anticipated. So the topic was uh, Nigeria towards a non-oil export driven economy, recommendations for the incoming administration. It was so explosive and um, so comprehensive that it became too short. Um, too many I, uh, um, 
ideas and issues were raised towards the end that even though we exhaust, I mean, exceeded our usual 90 minutes, we still could not um, get to the end of uh, the discussion. And so we thought, since the incoming administration of May is now the incumbent administration in June, we might as well spend this um, edition to round up uh, the recommendations for the new administration. And of course, while we can pretend to have 1 million recommendations, I would like, love us to uh, focus our uh, energy today on what concerns us, the non-oil export sector. I'm happy to note that, uh, like I said, not just in registration, but in participation, we do have um, uh, representatives of uh, export support institutions on this call. And um, I believe that uh, not only will the recorded version get to the um, respective MDAs, but at least those of them here. And please let me encourage you. Uh, I do know what government protocol is all about and that uh, you cannot make policy pronouncements, but please feel free to express your personal understanding, please. I do not think that there is any um, CEO, managing director, executive director who would um, berate you for making a personal uh, contribution at a forum like this, especially that has so much to do with designing a new direction for Nigeria's economy. Last month, we had Dr. Molara Akonji, a uh, former or uh, retired or uh, former director of the Trade Ex Exchange Department of Central Bank of Nigeria. We had Dr. John Isemede, um, the former director general of the National Association of Chambers and Co of Commerce, Industries, Mines and Agriculture, Nasima. We had uh, Alaji Sidi, Abdullah Sidi Aliu, retired director of export development and incentives department. He was at one point in charge of the uh, corporate strategy department of the Nigeria Export Promotion Council. Today, Thank to you, help you. To broaden the discussion, we are having um, with us the Director General of the Development Agenda for Western Nigeria, uh, Don Commission, uh, in the person of uh, Mr. Olusheye Oyeleye. DG, you are welcome, sir. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure being here, sir. Thank you. Yeah, we do understand your explanation about a week uh, okay. network. So, so we we part, right. we pardon you for not seeing your video. <laughs> we also Good have afternoon. the pleasure of uh, being here. Uh, we have a, pr a practitioner, a manufacturer, an exporter, and somebody who has been in the field in the person of uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Emmanuel Macaulay. We'll be talking from a uh, manufacturer exporter's point of view. You're welcome, Mr. Macaulay. You're muted. Please unmute yourself and meet your audience. Uh, thank you very much for bringing me on board, uh, Mr. Poyede. And, uh, good evening to everyone. You're welcome. Good evening. And uh, we have a barrister, Bayo Ayo. I wish I could just put SAN in front, but the man refuses. Even when we offer to help him pay for the uh, application for processing to visa, he refuses to allow us to fundraise. I don't know what I will do with this man, but I also don't know what I will do without him. So, <laughs> Barista Bayo Ayo um, has been he has been in industry for forever. I'm sure some people will remember uh, Atito's gang. Well, in the days of um, Patutomi, when the, some eggheads used to brainstorm the uh, what Nigeria should be, how Nigeria should be what it should be. So he does have very versatile, very long-term experience. Uh, and I believe that uh, we are going to be able to draw from your wealth of knowledge uh, in the brief time with our audience today. Welcome, Barista Bayo Ayo. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for inviting. 
And I know that at some point today, Dr. Isemede uh, was bringing me with uh, more suggestions. Um, last time, um, we will find time to bring you on. I know that uh, of recent, I think three days ago, Mr. Fidelis Onu, the Director General of uh, Delta Association, is it just Delta Association or South South Association? You guys, you are trying to take over Nigeria's export economy. Just yesterday, I read that Barista Legbosi is now the uh, president of uh, Ogoni Chamber of Commerce. So that's that's right. You are building capacity, and I'm really excited. Um, I Thank appreciate the, <laughs> the summary you made of uh, Mr. President President Bola Metinubu's uh, inaugural speech. You concentrated on the aspect that. Uh, that affects us, the economy. And uh, that was really a lot of good work. Uh, of you course, much, I share the idea, uh, the response from uh, uh, Lamin Baro, uh, the country director general of uh, Africa Development Bank, who has spoken my mind. Uh, we want to thank you for that. Thank so you, without um, dragging us for too long further, I believe I welcome one person that I am seeing. I hope he is with us fully today. He has managed to escape every time. Uh, controller, retired controller Solomon Ogunle. Today, you are going to tell us more about that. Uh, ISRT. I see. I'll, okay. Uh -huh. yes, At yes, some I point, you are please going to explain to us especially because I think one of the solutions that as the moderator, one of the solutions I am proposing that we need to uh, understand and take advantage of really is this group export, whether it is groupage at container level or groupage at paying haulage or groupage at taking a trailer. So at some point, uh, controller Blair, please, I would... Uh, uh, crave your indulgence. We will be giving you a few minutes to uh, talk to us about this again. You are welcome, sir. Okay, thank you. And yeah. Having said that, um, Lady K, are we good to go or do you want to interlude again? Uh, please, we are good to go. You have done all the introductions necessary. So thank you, everybody. And uh, I yield the floor now to Femi Boyede, who is moderating today's speech. The topic of the day is towards a non-oil export driven economy, uh, recommendations for the new administration. And um, when we were packaging today's, uh, uh, today's edition, um, we were actually looking at the uh, continuing the recommendations. Then boom, um, the government was inaugurated and then the inaugural speech by Mr. President, and everybody has gone haywire uh, talking about the president removing um, fuel subsidy. I was privileged to be on channels television yesterday, uh, sunrise yesterday, and um, of course the same question was thrown to me. I did try uh, to explain. My understanding is that President Bola Ahmed Tinubu did not uh, remove oil subsidy, did not, even in the speech, uh, it was very, very clear that the uh, cessation of allocation for uh, to oil subsidy had, the decision had been taken even uh, long before uh, I believe long before he even uh, became president-elect. And unfortunately, uh, they say on easy lies the head that wears the crown, he inherited the government at a moment when the implementation of a, an executive decision was to start. So it fell on him. He was the onset, at the onset of his administration. But while we're not looking at who said what and whether it was right time or not. The fact remains that that pronouncement 
had a does have up till now a very heavy impact on general life, but specifically on production, on trade, on commerce, and everything, and therefore on the competitiveness of Nigeria's export products and services. Because now, even those of us who are not manufacturers, we do use uh, computers, we use generators to run these computers. Um, I did not have a particular order in which uh, the uh, panelists were supposed to respond, but I am aware that uh, I had to Kumel uh, Barrister Bayo Ayo to be with us here. He is actually supposed to be somewhere else. And so I will happily release you whenever they call that you should join them again. But please, what um, do you think, what impacts do you think uh, the new price of PMS? What impact do you think this will have on Nigeria's exports? And how do you think this can be reduced? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, once again, I uh, greet you all. Yeah, for me, the impact of, of the uh, price hike will be very harsh. This, just this afternoon, I was driving into um, Transcom, and the the man at the gate who was supposed to give me the gate start stopped and said, please, how will this thing, this uh, first class um, price increase affect us? So I had to park and I, it took me a while to come, to let him know that, that, yes, it's going to be very tough on everybody in the initial stages. Extremely tough. So, because if you look at the, the ricochet effect, the spiral, effect of the cost of fuel on the uh, various retails and, and consumables. Transportation has automatically increased. You know, so we have to look at it from the point of view of the farmer who takes his um, crops from the farm gate to the market automatically the cost of transport has gone higher. So this also, and I, if I draw a bit from what Mr. Boyde um, analyzed it on Channel TV yesterday, on the issue of the spiral effect, the man, I think you gave an example of the, is it cucumber or something? Or all fruits? Watermelon. Um, watermelon. Watermelon. Yeah. So the watermelon, the, the value of watermelon has not gone up per se. But the value chain that brings the watermelon from the farm to the market has gone up. So it takes the man from the farm to carry his goods to the gate, from the gate to the market. That's where the effects, you know, comes from. And so we are also supposed to be expecting the, 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 the harmonization of the forex exchange rates. So by the time these two come into play, I am sure that the next few months, I don't know whether it's three months or six months, is going to be very hard on all of us. Even, even my son had to call me to let me know that um, Thing, uh, he has to. I have to add to his uh, monthly allowance now that the um, the fuel cost has gone up, so that because of his transportation to and from school, so it's going to have an effect on all of us. No doubt about that. Thank you so much for the opening remarks, uh, well, Mr. Macaulay. I am sure that um, you will have uh, figures. You started the year with, a, I remember in those days, operations plan or operation, operational budget. Operational with uh, uh, with uh, consumables at a certain price. Now, uh, this uh, has kind of uh, altered. 
What effects will this have on the unit cost of crystal toothpaste, especially knowing you are still struggling to break into the international market? And as you tell us the effect, if you have an idea of how government, of course, trade support institution can help to mitigate this uh, uh, unplanned uh, increase. Please, you have the floor. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Boyde. Uh, for me, I have a slightly different uh, view. Uh, because mainly for, for as a manufacturer, we, other than our staff, workers, I can see, uh, what affects us directly when it comes to transportation? We got deregulated <laughs> about two years ago. So, for a classical example, if I have to talk to uh, with reference to export, is different. Locally, uh, 2020, pre COVID, before March, April 2020, a truck load. A trailer load, 30 tons, 40 tons to Kano, was 350,000. COVID came, okay, vehicles were not available. Uh, the general thinking, nobody wants to die. And so on. we all want to go to heaven. Uh, we were paying, we started paying 500 under the guise of COVID and so on. But uh, the fuel went up from 150 to 200, then from to as high as 800 Naira per liter, 820 per liter. And that was over about two years ago. Now, the same trailer load that we're paying 350 now cost 1.4, 1.450, 1 1.5 to Kano. Same to other parts of the country, same to yours, same to Yola, and so on. So we have been we have been at it for quite some time now. So I will just say I will say when it comes to the latest uh, the regulation, if there is any deregulation at all of supply of or mainly of PMS, which is commonly called petrol, it has to do with maybe the taxis, the many buses, and so on. We've been paying that long ago. Uh, and uh, getting our products, other raw materials from the port, in terms of, and uh, getting our finished goods to the marketplace. We have been doing that. The market got regulated over two, over two, about two years ago. So really, <laughs> The only thing we are just worried, I just called, I've spoken to our group HR that, okay, fine. There's likely to, we may be facing some challenges with the union to say, well, uh, look, this thing was 185, 184, 185. Now, uh, if I had the group MD of NPC very well, is about 530, 500, above 500 now. So you can see. It is not just 100%, it's about 150% or more. So we we'll, we have to contend with that. We have to contend with that. Yeah. And I, uh, when I, it comes to, okay. well, go ahead. On the export side, on the export side, uh, except for trust going from Nigeria, from like for neighboring countries, there is nothing like the regulation in the neighboring countries of the Benin Republic, Togo, Ghana, they have been paying, I know, in Republic of Benin, diesel sell, I mean, uh, the diesel, which is a sells for 700, 700 uh, CFE, 700 CFE, the same thing in Togo, and Ghana, the same thing, and petrol, the other thing. Well, it is not strange. I bought fuel, I bought fuel in Republic of Benin, that was sometimes last quarter of, last quarter of last year, 
a full tank, a full, my, my tank, my tank uh, is about 150 liters because it's a special tank. Uh, converted to Naira, it cost me about almost 70,000 Naira. So, and I've just calculated to at 480 or 500 is the same. It will cost my me to uh, about 75,000 Naira to fill up my tank. So for me on the export side, I don't think there are issues because most times the vehicles that ply West Coast and so on, they all we have been on that for two years now. Yeah, let me appreciate um, your very gentle uh, mien, um, reiterating uh, a point that we have always used uh, to advocate for. Um, ample incentives to support export activity from Nigeria. I know that for a long time now, I have always argued that every manufacturer in Nigeria is its own uh, local government, provides its own water, uh, provides its own electricity and what have you, and whatever government is doing um, is uh, 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 meant to help to reduce the unit cost of uh, production. I know that um, what you have lived with for so long does probably does not come to you as strange any longer. But I can assure you, maybe the first uh, step in the right direction you have taken is to anticipate uh, a meeting with your uh, uh, HR because of union. The person who came to work at 400 Naira per, uh, per drop yesterday and on Monday is going to come to work at 1,300 Naira, he's not going to be happy with you when you are uh, giving him the normal, uh, when you are giving him the normal 30,000 Naira per month at the end of the month. But we'll come to that, sir. Um, uh, DG, uh, Mr. Oyele, thank you very much again for being with us. You have carried this kind of uh, burden for quite a long time um, as the Secretariat of the Economic Development of one of Nigeria's geopolitical zones. So um, challenges and burdens uh, of economic um, nature, I think are not strange to you. Now, um, you did try to uh, also uh, create um, an export development agenda for Western Nigeria. And uh, I believe therefore that you are in a position to advise us here and uh, by us extrapolated to the incoming administration about um, how you see non-oil exports contribution to the new economy of uh, the administration's dream. and. Um, what and what uh, you consider as the lowest hanging fruits that we should be looking at. You have the floor, sir. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Good evening once again. Um, let me even chip in with this um, forest subsidy. Let's start with the forest subsidy removal thing and its impact. Um, I, 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 th I think I was attending... Um, a seminar yesterday, and it was the focus. And I remember saying that um, with fuel subsidy, for some of us, actually, we have been on the other side of the argument for the better part of 10 years. I, I, I remember in 2012, I was an advocate of uh, subsidy remover, and uh, some of my friends then termed me a bourgeois, that, uh, oh, you are, you are comfortable, you live in Abuja. But I, I, I said then that um, I'm not sure the country can afford it, even at the amount we are paying then, and particularly because it was um, the, the, the fraud involved in, in particular. And, you know, by the time we got to 2022 and started on I'm just, um, for want of a better, maybe, and just maybe we have um, a government that is ready to confront the monster head on. Because if we don't do it, as someone said, I think it was, it's the new vice president that said, if we don't end subsidy, 
subsidy my aid in Nigeria. I hope our situation does not turn to Venezuela. But now going back to your question on uh, on non exports, you see, I, I, I at times we get um, it, it has become a cliche when the various governments come in and they tell you, oh, we need to diversify the economy, we need to do this. And I say all the time that the economy is already diversified. I mean, how much does um, all the oil sector in the real sense contribute to the economy? It's only because it's the only one that uh, maybe fetches the Nigerian government enough money. So the, the, the economy is already diversified, in my opinion. What we have failed to do over the years is how do we, as a government or as a region, start to get the benefits of the non-oil exports. Um, I have a friend who is into, who is into cashew exports. Um, and if I mention his name here, some of us might know him. And I speak with him regularly. And I asked him, I said, what is wrong, in a, as an example, with our, with our cashew? And he says, oh, Cher, it's one of the best in the world. The problem is that uh, the way we do our things here, by the time we get it outside the country, they tend to, uh, what's it called? They tend to underprice because we have not maintained the acceptable standards across the, across the uh, which is the internationally acceptable standards of exports. And I say, why is that? And then it comes back to us and say, well, is the government not enforcing their own rules in the country? And... That cashew is just a product across board, across board. Uh, I'm sure we're still going to eat uh, as we progress, but across board, I don't think we have done enough as, as government. I, I'm speaking now from the government side that there is more than enough things we can do that, you know, at the moment we are all shouting, we have huge, humongous debt. But again, I argue, you might find it strange that I don't think that the problem is the debt. I think our problem is revenue, revenue problem. Our debt is not that huge. So the amount of revenue we're losing in not focusing on the non-oil exports as a government. So everyone is doing their own thing. Nobody, I, I mean, in, in, on paper, yes, it can be, it should be regulated, but you find out that the cocoa guy sends his cocoa to the international market. Who regulates it? It's only when it gets out there that they say, oh, your cocoa does not meet this grade. Yes, you might argue again that so oh, the government is doing this, but there is a lot of gaps, which I'm sure we'll, we'll highlight here this afternoon, that I believe if we have sincerity and focus, maybe we'll be spoiled by oil, and now that uh, we have challenges, we then revert, reset our brains, concentrate our minds, and start looking at what and what can we get out for what we call the so-called non-oil exports, which is huge, humongous. And people are just doing their own thing in their own corner. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, DG. I do appreciate this. Um, you have um, emphasized in uh, no mean terms the need to generate the revenue in order to be able to service the debts or pay part of the principal debt itself. Yeah. Um, I, and I think that this is what um, Talking Trade is all about. We have been trying to encourage Nigeria to bake a new national cake. If the problem of the country has been um, struggling for a share of the cake, um, we believe that uh, non-oil exporters are actually qualified to bake a new national cake and reduce the, uh, the pressure on the center. And I think that we will get there as we're going. Um, I want to bring this into uh, some kind of a summary perspective. Um, part of the credentials that Nigeria's new pre uh, president had was raising the revenue, internally generated revenue of Lagos State um, when he was governor of Lagos State, raising it dramatically, unbelievably by about 1,000, 2,000 percent. And therefore, I, I have a very strong hope that if revenue generation is part and part, parcel of the man's DNA, uh, generating revenue from export should actually come like a piece of uh, cake uh, for him. And we're hoping that um, 
uh, the suggestions that you bring up on this platform, on this uh, webinar today, will probably help them to get to uh, that level. Um, let me bring um, a what we call a retired principal of uh, non-oil export institution. Sorry, that institution exists in only my head. We haven't created it yet. Dr. John Isemede, you have um, applied this road with us for several decades. And uh, now here we are. Uh, we, for those of us in the export industry, we are actually looking to be able to clap for Mr. President in his first 100 days. If Nigeria Bureau of Statistics can report a, 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 a sporadic uh, increase in um, uh, foreign exchange generation from the non-oil export sector. Two things, just one and two, uh, in two minutes, sir, that uh, you think the government can do to achieve a speedy turnaround in Nigeria's uh, economy. Yeah, um, thank you, Boidi. So let me stand on existing protocol. This is a familiar terrain, not only in Nigeria, because we have worked in other countries before. When you talk of gener uh, revenue generation, the first question we should ask ourselves, the president was able to do ABCD in Lagos. But Lagos is different from other 36 states and all that. So also we should look at what other states of Nigeria is contributing, how many people are working and what the governors are doing. We should not shy away, we are adults. We have seen it over the years that most governors live in Abuja. Is that where they are doing the supervision? During the political era or when the campaigns, many abide on their states. But when you now want to talk of revenue generation, I have worked in companies, Unilever, Dangote, Cowbear, Unido, and all that. These are companies that were equally using oil and gas. And we have not been able to ask ourselves, how are other countries sharing borders with us are able to do it? I worked in Benin. What we pay here is lower than what they pay in Benin Republic to buy diesel or petrol or whatever you call it. But the truth of the matter is that what of cost of transportation? If you look at the analysis, the matrix and all that, I think Abuja should be cheapest in the world, followed by Accra. And if you now talk of revenue generation, what of the leakages in the system? Exporters will tell you here that when we take our goods to the port, the number of agencies and all that, do you get receipts? Another issue you should equally look at it is that you are talking of petrol. Am I to do the work of the security agencies or the private sector to do the work of an MPC? In 1990, I carried out a research for Unilever. I went to Central African Republic by road. I went to Chad, up to Mali, Burkina Faso, and all that. If the report is still available, Nigeria is the one subsidizing all this. I went to Cameroon, down to the border with Gabon and Equatorial Guinea. How many Nigerians have done all this? If you now talk of revenue generation, you have to produce before you get revenue. In that, looking at that chain, people will pay taxes. What of the cost of production in Nigeria? The, the policy of Nigeria is on importation because of the import culture. People prefer to import and make huge amount of money and create billionaires out of nothing. Look at the banks who are posting profit. If the, Mr. President wants to generate more revenue. We know the area we should focus on. We are talking of production. We are talking of distribution. To bring in goods to Nigeria is one of the cheapest in the world on FOB or CIF basis. To take a container from here to Benin Republic is much more expensive. This morning, people were talking about going to Cote d'Ivoire by air. And from the ticket I have here to China, it's even cheaper than to go to Cote d'Ivoire. I've not been to Cote d'Ivoire for the past 30 years by air. To me, 120 kilo, 1,200 kilometers is what I can drive in 18 hours. If you look at the final analysis, government has come up with a very good, a very good, the, the commodity boards. I have been fighting that battle for close to 14 years. 
since the Commodity Board was abolished in 1986, it became an issue of quality and all that. The chairman or the president of NASPAN is here, and I said it in Abuja, is more or less a political gang up because most of the MBAs are working for foreigners. So if the president okay. can implement the Commodity Board, more money will come into this country. It's not the idea of taking cash now to Benin Republic you can export, or you take cocoa to Ghana. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. John, and thank you that um, just at the point I was trying to uh, pause you, you uh, were rounding up. I was actually going to ask the question which you already answered. Um, having commodities bo uh, commodity boards is one thing. Um, staffing them with knowledgeable technocrats um, uh, probably should be a point of attention. I think this could be one of our conclusions here. The commodities boards are very, very welcome, but they must be properly staffed and properly equipped also to do the job. Their um, activities, uh, uh, action plan, terms of reference must be clearly defined in such a way that it gives uh, uh, room for uh, uh, deliverable targets and therefore monitoring and evaluation of performance. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Isemede, for that. Uh, Mr. Fidelis Onu, you did um, a summary of uh, Mr. President's uh, speech. Um, can you please just uh, share with us two, three points uh, where you think that, again, I'm going to bring, uh, uh, probably looking at other things. So it does take money. It takes money to get money. It takes money to get money. And um, I think that we have not, even the last time, we've not talked about the role of financing uh, exports in Nigeria in such a way that it can then uh, 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 generate much more money. But for now, Mr. Onu, please share with us uh, your views about uh, how the new administration can actually uh, 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 put Nigeria on the direction of an export-driven economy. All right, thank you very much, sir. And uh, once again, thank you for this opportunity uh, you are giving us. Uh, I want to uh, humbly acknowledge the presence of uh, my elder, Dr. Semede, who was a past DG of uh, Nasima and uh, also support most of what he has said on this uh, platform. Uh, okay. All right, let me share my video. Am I? All right. So uh, in the light of, uh, and before I just go on, I just want to use this opportunity to let everybody know that uh, Nasima will be having our investiture for the new, uh, the incoming president, Chief uh, Dele Oye, on the 6th of November. And one of his uh, uh, issues on his agenda is to try to see how the organized private sector can partner with the government to attract you know investment into nigeria regardless of our challenges and circumstances you know so i'm hoping i'm hoping that uh, some of us in this platform will do our best to attend the investor it's going to become a iniquity state having said that in the light of the challenges posed by the removal of oil subsidy and the subsequent increase uh in fuel prices you know here are uh, in my own opinion, uh, suggestions that could help to mitigate, you know, the impact on uh, our exporters in uh, not just Delta State now, but even in Nigeria. You know, uh, one is government support. You know, and I'm happy that the incoming, I mean, the president, the new president, is looking at really partnering with um, um, the uh, in, uh, private sector to see how we can uh, grow our economy. Of the speech is given. Uh, my hope is that, like you said earlier, in the next hundred days, he should be able to get some milestones in that regards. You know, but the private sector really craves for government support that enable the environment. The government can provide targeted support incentives to exporters to offset the increased production costs. You know, this could uh, include subsidies or grants. You know, specifically 
directed towards exporters to help alleviate the burden of higher fuel prices. You know, if we're going to be competitive, like you were alluding to earlier, we need to look at the cost of our, you know, uh, fuel, you know, and how it impacts our exports and all that in terms of tra transportation and other logistical issues. You know, infrastructural development is another issue we need to look at critically. You know, we need to invest in infrastructure, particularly, you know, like I said earlier, transportation networks, you know, which can help reduce logistical costs for exporters, you know, improving our roads, rail, and all that. You know, Cocoa Port, for instance, in Delta States, is, is, is so neglected. And I think, and some exports go on from there, maybe not in a huge form, but I believe that if maybe um, states, federal government, and even the private sector can look at providing some kind of infrastructure, because the roads to that port are abysmal to a large extent. So I, I will, our hope in the, as Gasima is that the federal government and the state government can look at, you know, upgrading that port and putting more infrastructure in place, you know, to help drive exports and even imports of uh, much necessary uh, or much needed uh, uh, commodities or uh, part of the production value chain of uh, manufacturers in Delta State and also in the region. And that aspect, again, that we need to look at is diversification of energy sources. One of the challenges I have seen as a member of um, a NEC, the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission uh, Forum in Asaba, Delta State, is that a lot of industries crave for, you know, affordable and efficient power supply that we're not getting from the conventional sources like discos and all that. You need investment in that area because that's where our members can now begin to grow their capacity. There are clusters where I've tried to encourage, you know, to keep on producing, but the cost of production is too much, largely because of this power inefficiency by the government, uh, by the um, um, utility companies operating the franchise, you know, and I'm not going to mention names, but that's a major challenge for us. So we are looking, at, we are hoping that we can attract, you know, um, investors into that, uh, this aspect you know, of power production and power um, energy access so that our uh, producers, manufacturers, processors can begin to produce competitively. We are tired of hearing things like, okay, we are exporting palm oil produce, or it looks like it's cheaper to get its source from Cote d'Ivoire or some other countries that we believe we are, you know, in capacity better than or larger than. So I'm hoping that that's something that uh, the new administration should look into uh, in the not too distant future. Export promotion yeah. and... Sorry? No, no. I thought you had rounded up. No, no, okay. I'll round up in a few minutes now. So export promotion and market development is another area the government and the chambers of commerce can collaborate to actively promote Nigerian exports and explore markets. You know, that's one area we should really collaborate, to collaborate on by, by, by diversifying our export destinations, identifying emerging markets with favorable trading conditions, you know, exporters can mitigate the impact of increased costs of tapping into new opportunities. You know, enhance efficiency and cost management is another aspect that government can look into with, in partnership with the organized private sector. You know, exporters should focus on improving, you know, our operational efficiency. Many exporters have not done that, you know, administratively and uh, uh, in a capacity of operation. So people are still operating in ways that are not you know, in, inclusive of the world best practices, you know, and using archaic uh, 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 what you call it, uh, production equipment to, 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 to do their business, I think, and also in employing uh, uh, staff that are not capable of running their business. That's another challenge that many of our people have in the United Delta. This can include optimizing supply chains. This, I'm talking about efficiency and cost management. We can also look at including you know, optimizing supply chains, exploring economies of scale, and adopting technology solutions that streamline, you know, processes and reduce wastage. Then advocacy and dialogue, that's the language of the Chambers of Commerce. We like to advocate for different things, you know, and now that we have this issue, of, and I'm glad about this such a program. Uh, this, uh, this, uh, this is another, this is a welcome development, and we hope that from this program, when we come to some kind of uh, communicate, we can impute our own 
um, um, information into the advocacy that will be making to the federal government concerning, you know, the impact of this um, um, uh, uh, removal of subsidy, you know. And the I think I may have to pause you here. I'm seeing that we have barely 25 minutes to go. Uh, we we'll try sir. to take as many this as possible, and then if there's time, I will still come back on the big. I know that um, I um, uh, there are a few hands on Dr. Koji, um, uh, Mr. Um, Mohamed uh, Kotangura, our national president, and um, I I specifically wanted to see to hear about the um, transport uh, facilitation thing and. Um, so I think we should just post and uh, uh, for the time being, let's uh, hand over to our anchor emeritus, um, Lady Kay, and then we will come back again to the panelists uh, uh, very shortly. Thank you. Thank you to all our panelists. We have some hands up now. I acknowledge uh, Omonara Akonji Moid A.K. If there's any other person that wishes to say anything, it can be questions, it can be just comment, comments. Please use the emoji to raise up your hand. Otherwise, you can put it on the chat forum and uh, I will call you to speak. So uh, in order, I have Omolara uh, Kanji. Please omit yourself, you have the floor. And um, pardon me looking this way today, my camera is not working. Thank you, Lady Gay. You are, you are beautiful. Thank you. Right. Uh, my, my, I want to thank the panelists. And I want to also uh, emphasize the need for this commodity board that has been, uh, you know, that is going to be reinstated. But there are two things that we need to understand. For commodity board to be more efficient, we need to know which of these commodities that we want to encourage and, and make, make it a, a commodity that is known to be a Nigerian commodity. In those days, it was cocoa. And we were always uh, monitoring cocoa because of the foreign exchange flow that comes from it. The flow comes straight to Central Bank and we, are, we were able to put it in the market. So we need to identify which commodities are we going to encourage commodities but to 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 plan to to play with it in the in the commodity market. That is one. The second point is that everybody has been talking about uh, this uh, tax tax issue, the multiple taxation that is in the system. How are we going to you know get over it in the in the in the export um, um, sector? We need to look at that. What, how many tax uh, do we have? In, you know this multiple taxation is it really affecting export we need to drill down that and finally we also need to talk to son son should come and talk to us here and let us know what standardization they are focusing on particularly on export thank you thank you so much ma Thank you so very much. I have a uh, Mohammed AK. Please unmute yourself. You have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, let me thank the panelists for doing justice to the topic. And I will start by also appreciating Mr. President uh, for bringing back the issue of the commodity um, board exchange. That's what, what they use in the, the, uh, this, in the presentation of Mr. President. <laughs> but I want us to know that um, there are two distinct things, although they all try to provide the same services. We have the commodity board. We have the commodity exchange. The commodity board was what we used to have in the past. It started with regional marketing boards, regional marketing commodity boards, and uh, we used to have four in Nigeria at that time during the regional government. Um, we have Northern Nigeria Marketing Board, Eastern Nigeria, Western Nigeria, and Northern Cameroon. Later on, those commodity board 
we are reduced to commodity space. We want to have the cocoa bud, we have the granite, the cashew, the palm, all those ones. Now, the essence of those bodies essentially is to create market. Now, why, what happened was that when Nigeria was trying to collect IMF loan, the first condition is that we regulate the agri sector. And in deregulating the agri sector, we remove all the structure and the infrastructure of marketing. At that time, the first victim was the farmer. Because the commodity board, a farmer knows his market. That is a guaranteed market. That is local buying agent. A farmer knows where to take his words immediately after that. With the, then we also have Nigerian marketing company, which is an umbrella body that exports Nigerian products at that time. So when this structure was completely removed, as I said earlier, the first victim is the farmer. The second victim is a uh, government because government is no more collecting revenue. And the sad part of it is that the services rendered by this commodity would were left up were left a Nobody was given that responsibility, not until in 1996, when the Commodity Export uh, Committee was set up in the Ministry of uh, Investment. But with the present day situation, and that was what is, I, t I want to believe it's because we had oil money, so we all felt that it's no need, so we neglected the sector. And that's what brought about the collapse of the entire uh, agri uh, industry at that time. Now, we have commodity uh, exchange. The commodity is entirely different because in the commodity exchange, a farmer can also take his ways to the uh, exchange. That is collateral warehouse. That is uh, also appointed collateral warehouse managers. For the example, today in Nigeria, we have about four commodities exchange. I don't want to mention them, but I can tell you the major challenge they are facing is that most of them have no structures, no infrastructure at the producing level. So for us to make a success of it, we must establish aggregation centers. And these aggregation centers will now serve as collateral warehouses within producing community, such that if a farmer has his produce, he can take it, and then we can now introduce the warehouse receipt financing scheme, which means a farmer knows the value of his produce on going to the market, it is now I said, and then send, he has an appointed agent who will now trade his commodity at the floor of the commodity exchange. This one is more scientific, which means a buyer from London can buy your product from the commodity exchange online. So if we will be able to achieve this, I can tell you we will revitalize the rural economy, will generate the revenue, but most importantly, we need to advise the government, let private sector lead, let private sector take lead in, in, in managing and promoting this commodity exchange. Recently, CBN took over Nigerian commodity exchange. What happened? What is the result? Who are those managing it now? What is the result? So we have to look at it critically. Please allow private sector. For a, a, a look at all these multinational. They are in our villages. They are go to farm gate to buy. In Ethiopia, you can you, if you are buying a, a commodity worth five thousand, you can know five thousand. You cannot buy it in the open market. You have to go to the floor of the exchange. So in essence, we need to regulate this sector. We cannot continue to pretend because even in America they regulate agri sector. Every developer, but they pretend to us, okay, we should regulate. And deregulate, and our farmer are now left at the mercy of the Sherlock Randall. We were you deregulate, nobody take care of the farmer. It is difficult for a farmer to get uh, input like fertilizer. Our farmers, I, uh, the uh, the kind of seed they are using is not the high yield; it's the low yielding variety. So, but if we are really supporting, if we are really serious in diversifying, let's focus a lot on this sector. Let's provide the basic infrastructure. Let's put the structure such that the commodity exchange will continue to flow. And definitely, definitely we'll generate all the revenue we want and we'll revitalize the rural economy. Thank you. Thank you so much. For Thank you so very much. We appreciate your contributions as always.
And uh, okay, the next hand I have up is uh, uh, Abu Unda Ali, Nigeria Art Commission to South Africa. Thank you so much for joining us again today. You have the floor. And after him, I'll be bringing in Elizabeth. And um, yes, let's go from there. Thank you, Lady Kay. Uh, thank you for having me and make just the two uh, comments. I hope you can hear me clearly. And thank you, yes. uh, our distinguished convener, <laughs> convener uh, Mr. Fenwady. I, I think I've listened very carefully to some of the presentations that I've done, even though I joined late, late, but especially the one by, I think, Nakima, if I'm, if I'm right, the one that talked about export promotion and market development. And what came to my mind immediately in made that statement was that what are the, I mean, we have a lot of policies, agencies that are doing export promotion. I think we need, I, I, there will be more interesting to have a more highlight of what kind of export promotion and market development that which we're looking at. Because if, it, if the government is already there, and when you talk about export promotion, they will tell you, they will tell you, ah, but there's export promotion agency that is doing this, right? And then, uh, and that second comment I also wanted to, to, to highlight is the issue around um, what the Ministry of Trade and Investment is doing in terms of policy. Now, I know when I was in the ministry, there's a department that talks about Commerce 44. The question is whether are we with those initiatives? Yeah, I mean, 11 products, 11 destination market, 11, 11 uh, what do you call it, solid mirrors and the rest and the rest. I think we, we need to, this platform, for me, from, because I'm, I'm beginning to enjoy this platform, this platform to be able to begin to just direct the focus of, of our policy thinkers or makers, just let me put it that way, by refocusing our ideas and thoughts. Now, if we say we're promoting 11 products, right, we need to really understand those products. How are the production of those products back home? And I think I like the, the, the story or the narrative around promoting boards and the rest being created. That is a very um, an important step to be taken. And I think that is the way to go. Then, uh, as somebody spoke about, uh, and I think talking trade, you need to really help us at this point by bringing agencies, regulatory agencies, NAFDAQ, SUN, to come to and discuss with us in terms of what kind of standards do we really need to export our products? Look, I'm here in South, I'm here in South Africa. And sometimes when we talk about, okay, I want to bring Nigerian products to South Africa, they tell you, they will reject it. I don't know, something just go wrong. And then when you ask them, where do you get this product, for example, for yam? They say, oh, we got it from Ghana. What is happening? Yam, we know yam is from Nigeria. So I think, I think this platform truly, truly, if we have agencies like NAVDAT, SON, um, what do you call it, Nigeria Custom Service, to also come talk, talk to us so that people understand on how to refocus our thinking in terms of export promotion and export market. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you so very much. Uh, we're bringing in Madam Elizabeth Olari Um, Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, standing on the existing protocol because of time, all that have been said earlier, I want to say thank you. And uh, just to emphasize some of them again, that uh, giving things or ideas that can be looked into, or suggestions that can make it better for us going forward. Enabling environment, it's key. Because when you look at the cost of putting equipment and everything together to make a quality product, you see that exporters are tying down capital. That's one. And a lot of things make it operationally inefficient. When we now go down, we look at commodity board. Commodity board has to come back. I was somewhere not too long and the Ghana people were talking and they said they can't sell cocoa by themselves anymore. The government has to sell on their behalf. So they are looking at how to penetrate into Nigeria to buy cocoa from Nigeria to export out. That means we are porous. And that means we don't have price control. That means a lot, that means a lot of a lot of issues that is going on within our system is being known by our neighbors. And they always capitalized on this. And that is why you see everything being going to Ghana because we sell to them at harvest because I can't afford to hold on to that product to myself. So you need money. 
And it's the same way, even when you go to the local women, the real, real, whatever women you want to call them, they want to sell off immediately and have their money back immediately. So that aspect has to be looked into how we can sell off to the government and take the money. And in this policy this time around, stakeholders need to be involved because we are actually the ones that bear the brunt at the end of the day. So there is need for stakeholders to be involved in making this new policy and making it to work. Let me stop at that. Now we look at what are the products that we want to uh, bring on board. We talk about cocoa, we talk about shea butter. I could see my president sitting in house speaking not too long. Palm oil is there, spices are there, yam is there. Just keep mentioning, recently in Niger State, the governor said he doesn't want to see anybody selling the shea nut out of the country. And I think we should give him a clap. If every governor can also walk in light to look at what are the, uh, the commodity in their locality that can be looked into and be protected and to see that just nobody taking it out of the hand of people in the villages like that. I think we can go on and on, but new policies with stakeholders. I want to leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Madam Elizabeth. Thanks for being a faithful. Uh, I'm calling now on uh, retired controller Ubuleye. Can you hear me? Are you there? Anybody you? wants to bring him in? I can hear you. <laughs> yes, please go ahead and then we'll now take back our panel. No. Please go ahead. Thank you, Lady K. You know, I talked about ICRT the other time. The, uh, are you hearing me? Yes. Very clearly. Hello? Very clearly. Yes, we hear we can you. Hear you. Uh, yes. I talked about, yes, I talked about ICRT the other time. That is interstate road transport. Is a, a small for transit trade. I want to say that again, it's not for transit trade. It's not meant for intra equals uh, uh, trade, like goods originating from Nigeria going to Ghana or Ivory Coast. No, that one will be captured more under ETLS. And I, I, will, I will advise that we should appeal to Nigerian government or a chamber of commerce in the sub-region to really work on their MDA, their agencies along the, along the road, like Lagos, uh, uh, Dakar Corridor, or from Gambia to Nigeria, whatever, to work on it so that goods can have smooth, smooth uh, movement across, uh, across states along the corridor. Because I, the other day I had uh, uh, Alagi Ali Kodangote talking that it's easier for him to, I mean, that for his cement to go mm -hmm. from the factory in Beche, which is about, it says about 20 kilometers or so into somewhere in Benin Republic, that it will take about two weeks because of protocols, because of uh, uh, protocol that ETLS has already erased. So if you can strengthen, ETLS scheme across the subregion to work. Now, coming to ICRT, uh, uh, ISRT, ISRT is more to encourage goods imported into the subregion going to interland, and it's more operational along the uh, Umoa, Mano River Commission area. That is Syria, Long, Gambia, to Equatorial Guinea, and uh, Guinea-Bissau axis. So that it uh, is, the, is the procedure that allows the transport of goods by road from one custom office, that you, from a custom uh, uh, office in a, in a country, in one member state to, uh, to office of, in another member state, with the suspension of duties, taxes, and uh, prohibition uh, uh, procedures. The transit shall be carried out under cover of a single customs uh, document with no breach of obligation. That means it's for 
goods moving from maybe a, uh, a port to interland. It's not operational mostly in Nigeria, Ghana area. Um, That's not what I want to say. It's, it's operational in uh, Mano River. And the role of Chamber of Commerce along the corridor matters. If you are to have a smooth movement of goods and sensitization among MDAs, very important at the border posts for goods manufactured in Nigeria or from Ghana coming to Nigeria or anywhere. Those officers manning the borders, a Thank lot you. of sensitization has to be done and we have to be proactive about it. Thank you. Thank you so very much, sir. Uh, if a I, I see your name written as F.A. Use. Are you available to make your comment now? Thank you so much, Lady K. Thank you. Hope you can hear me now. Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for this uh, meeting. This Why are you borrowing Lady K's face? <laughs> Don't worry, Lady K will be removed now and we can see her. Yeah. Oh, you, sir. Oh, my God. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my no, don't worry. You don't need to see my face. Go ahead. Let's, Thank let's, you yeah. much, let's Okay. So, so let me okay. say this. Um, I run the Women in Export Group. And since we started, one of the challenges we have found, we have market. There is market for Nigerian products. There is market for the things the women do. There is market, international market. We have contact. However, the challenge we have made is our price company. By the time we put in the cost of our production and everything, even power, someone spoke earlier on about power, about infrastructure. By the time we put all of this together, the price cannot compete in the market. And we are saying, please, can we make an advocacy such that we can have integration center or processing center? We are ready to partner with the government to build these things and to run them profitably like a business centers, like business centers. We are ready to do that because we are already doing our own. But with little support from the government, we can actually do bigger ones that we can run as women. The women are structured enough now to run this thing. Years before now, we can say, ah, oh, we are not sure. But now we are. The women are very structured. If we can be determined to start our own, we need to support from the institutions like BOI, BOA, um, um, NAPC and the likes, having Nasima, if we can have little support to enable us to build and run our processing center, we can run them profitably. And they will aid most of those things, but at least bring down the cost and ensure standardization in the things that we produce, in the processed um, value added products that we want to export. So that's my cry, really. I just pray that someone would hear it and try to assist us in this, our call, you know, to increase the number of participation, women participation in export, because they're already doing it anyway. Just that is a fight, is a struggle, is tasking. We can do without all the stress, really, with little, little help. Little, little help. Thank you so much, Ma. I, I appreciate the time. <laughs> Thank you so much. You have brought in a refreshing dimension. Everybody speaking all along, men, 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 men. It's like they always forget that we women we are here. Okay, just an interlude. Um, uh, I have Ellie Imojin. Ellie, are you there? Yes, I'm here, Lady K. Good evening. Oh, super good evening. I'm very happy to see another woman. So Thank you. You, <laughs> you have the floor now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I'm in Benin, and um, I actually want to thank uh, Mr. Femi Boyede for all he's doing concerning export. Well, um, I'm a woman, and uh, I coordinate, or I'm the vice president at Web South South, and um, I'm also the public relations PRO for Edo State Exporters Cluster. Uh, a lot, 
there's a lot about exports. We can't say it all in a few minutes that we talk here. But one thing I want to point out is, I think we need hubs. Uh, going to the local people, they need to be educated on what to do and what not to do to get their, uh, 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 their crops or their uh, final production to the table. It's not the way it's being done now. We still need a lot of education for these people. What I've, I'm actually talking about is having hubs, you know, uh, women hubs across the place. We can have farmers market in locations. And here we can now pick up what it is that can be exported. We all know what is needed out there. And we know, but most of these people don't even know how to get it to the final stage. Our packaging most times is still very poor. And uh, these hubs can help in uh, 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 training people, especially on packaging, because that's exactly one thing that disqualifies our products outside the country. Talking about exports, there's a lot about it. And it's, 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 it's saddening to hear that uh, more than 50, 60 percent of our products are rejected outside the country. Why Nigeria? Why Nigeria? What are we to do that we are not doing? Is it the, if the government is not ready to help, then the private sector, we have to face the private sector, those in the private sector that have made it. And we call them to the table. You help and let us see how we can all move. Because I want to say something. Some countries made it through SMEs. All these uh, SMEs, then we now have the uh, MSMEs and all that. We just can't leave them to be, you know, to, to, to be fumbling and fumbling and fumbling. And then at the end of the day, you tell us again that their products we are rejected. Let's sit down. What are those who have, we can call the dangotes. We call them. How have you done it? Come, help. We need help. If we have to you know, come up to start asking these people to, oh, come and help these other people. How can you come in? How can you do it? So that at least in a year we can say, okay, so, so, so number of MSMEs or SMEs have been able to push so, so, so number of products out of the country. Uh, we seem to be, you know, we've talked enough. I think we, we, what we need now is time. We have the time now in our hands to push out. The talking is enough. Let's practicalize what we have been saying. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Uh, Fidelis? Fidelis Onu is a panelist. Oh, he's one of the panelists. Oh, okay. Uh, I saw his comment, so I don't need to read out his comment. <coughs> okay, thank you very much. I yield the floor back to Femi Boyede. Thank you so much, uh, Lady K. And uh, as usual, um, uh, everything just seems to be rounding up just when it is starting to heat up. But I note uh, that today we have at least uh, been able to knock the nail on so many uh, heads. I am very, very excited that uh, we agree with government about the reintroduction of the commodity, uh, commodity board, uh, but with a caveat that they should have their jobs clearly carved out, uh, specific terms of reference, um, specific targets that enable monitoring and evaluation to be um, carried out. Um, they, uh, they are uh, scrapping the first time, the way Mr. Kutangura described it, it's more like throwing the baby away with the bathwater. The same time that the IMF was re uh, recommending scrapping of commodity boards to Nigeria, they also did to Ghana. They did to Cote d'Ivoire. And um, uh, they had their own way of... Uh, Yorubas will say, Tanya, an old man will usually know uh, how the tree 
to put a, a piece of meat under the tongue and you will not know that he has meat there. That's what uh, those other countries have done better than us. And I think that it is time that Nigeria uh, exhumes, in the words of Dr. John Isemede, exhumes its uh, eggheads, its experts to help in um, designing uh, the way forward for all of this. Um, let me reiterate the fact that on talking trade and investment global, we have actually, this is in reference to the very last contribution by Helen, we have actually been advocating the creation of export processing centers. Export processing centers are more akin to the hubs that you are talking about. And uh, we will take this a little bit further. I will uh, personally engage with the uh, Director General of SMIDAN. Smidan has of recent uh, been forging a very strong working partnership with NEPC and uh, with uh, the uh, uh, God's gracious uh, um, access to the CEOs of these two agencies. I, I will discuss this a bit further with them. And of course, I'll share outcomes on the WhatsApp group of uh, Talking Trade and Investment Global. But I do know that it is important. Um, I thought, um, Mr. His Excellency um, uh, Nda Ali was also going to recommend, I'm not putting words in your mouth, but I think that um, we are of the opinion that reopening of as many commercial desks as possible that were arbitrarily and unilaterally and inexplicably closed under, I think it was the Abacha administration. I can't remember whether it was. I think it was the Abacha administration. They were scrapped. Canada, like I always give that example, does have um, 90, 198 um, offices of the Trade Commissioner. All of these are export promotion offices uh, of Canada around the entire world. I think uh, if Nigeria is trying to uh, drive to create an export-driven economy. One of the things that the team uh, think tank should be looking at is uh, uh, reopening or, re or, or locating uh, commercial um, offices in uh, sensitive and strategic countries where Nigeria's products and services do have export pro uh, potential. Uh, in talking about uh, um, this kind of collaboration that exists and uh, the call today for other agencies to come here to talk to us, it's, the plan is already underway to have NEXIM either in July or August. Um, NAFDAQ, um, of course, you all know the reason why it does appear that they're always uh, hesitant to come to pub uh, public glare, the kinds of uh, bullets that you fire at them. So if I can get 1,000 signatures that you will not skin them alive, I will forward this to, I will forward this to the Director General and beg her to please send somebody to come and talk to Nigerian exporters. Um, above all, everybody here has uh, stressed the fact that consultation is key. Consultation is key. You cannot shave somebody's head uh, in his or her absence. He has to present the head to the barber before it is barbed. So I believe that a lot of um, what is going on, um, let's take uh, the new administration for its goodwill, uh, uh, for its uh, 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 great intention in creating this sport, but let's also drum it out. Let's put it out there that the practitioners, the players, those who will operate whatever policy it is that is coming to be need to have an input into it. When there is collective ownership, implementation is easy. When there is collective buy-in, the need for enforcement is drastically reduced because already you were a part and parcel of creating the process. This enables and also calls for an elaborate attention on uh, communication. And of course, I always have said it, um, it is time for Nigeria to begin to consider 
export development going hand in hand with export promotion. Export development must go hand in hand with export promotion. Export yes. development right now is absent, uh, absent in our sphere of things, and therefore it does appear that we are promoting to the detriment okay. of development. This is where the issue of the ICRT comes in because export development will identify the bottleneck in haulage, in um, um, products that the supply chain, products getting from farm gate to the, tip, uh, the consumption table, whether it be in Banjul or in Nwakyo. Right now, this is a very difficult challenge. Export development okay. will take care. So we do advocate for export development to go hand in hand with export promotion. And uh, so Thanks. on that note, I would leave a little bit. If you do, do have some more comments today, um, our practice has always been to call up our panelists to please say a parting word. Please, Lady K, before um, you read out comments, may we take um, our uh, panelists of today, of today, um, uh, Dr. Olusheye Oyeleye DG, Don Commission, and after him, uh, Emmanuel Macaulay, after him, Mr. Mm -hmm. Bayo Ayo, to uh, please give their closing uh, shots. Thank you. Thank you to the technical team. Thank you to everybody. We're about rounding up. Uh, so we have one minute each from our panelists. And after that, as usual, we take pictures. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you very much. My name is Shayo Ele once again. As I was saying, um, it has been quite illuminating listening to everyone. And I'm very glad that um, we have um, again re-emphasized the, the, the need for Commodity Board. I mean, it's a shame that uh, we're still saying this in 2023 why we need a fit for purpose commodity board. Um, it's the only, I think is the only way we can standardize what we're doing in the non oil sector. And don't forget that even in the past with commodity boards that we had, like, they were the ones that were advising the government. They were the ones that took the products out of the market in quotes, because it was not a free for all thing. The moment we agree that free for all that we are doing at the moment and paying lip service to the non-oil sector is only harming us. So I'm glad that even the consensus here is that let's have a commodity board, let's have that TOR well-defined and let's have experts in exportation. Let them be the ones that are there. You see, we, I mean, you can't have the likes of several people who have spoken here today and we're still suffering with our non -oil. I was in, just 10 days ago, I was in London and I went to one of the shops there. And again, all I saw staring me in the face was Ghana yam in boxes. And I kept thinking, why can't we be seeing Nigerian yam all over the place? So, but well, let's put our house in order. And I'm glad again, and I hope some of the notes taken here will get to the appropriate quarters. I'm sure Mr. Boyde will say, well, you are one of the appropriate quarters and I'm ready to receive that. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, thank you so much. Um, Emmanuel Macaulay, one yeah. minute. Yeah, thank you. My focus mainly challenges of manufacturers, really. Mine, yes. Uh, briefly, I would say 2014, 2015, we're paying 70,000 naira and 90,000 naira to get a container from the port to our factories. But now, from 2016, we have been paying 700,000 and 900,000. And during uh, peak periods of Christmas and so on, it gets to 1.5 million. The problem is still there. Eight years, the ports couldn't be cleared. The roads are not there. From the ports to the various factories, the roads are not there. I'm crying now. now. I'm not, I'm, I have my reservation because government come, come government go. For the past, since I've been manufacturing for over 35 years, it's been like that. People come, say a lot of things. So not that I'm being pessimistic, but I've just I I want to maintain the don't look attitude. The second thing is regulatory agencies. Regulatory agencies we have here, they are making it difficult 
for businesses to thrive. Manufacturers are in problems. Regulatory charges, charge fees that are even higher than custom duty. You bring in a machine, a manufacturing line from anywhere, the custom duty you pay is even less than what regulatory agencies will say you pay to them. And they have become gener revenue generating agencies. It's on, it's on head. Uh, the th third one is export agencies. Okay, for export agencies, please. Thank God uh, somebody is on board here. I think Mr. Ono is here. Please. Look, in other climes, it is easy. Everything you do it online. Whether it is Nasima, whether it is uh, inspection agents, whether it's anything, online you do all those things. But in Nigeria, we have to come, go to various offices to send somebody down there to complete them. It's not done. It's not done. It is and it is militating against our the, the, the our businesses. Efficiency, yeah. Yes, it's, it's, it's too much. Then bottlenecks are the uh, just just one moment. We just two few seconds. Bottlenecks at our ports. Now to even ship with the, operate within the sub region, West Africa, it is difficult. It is difficult. There are no vessels going to Ghana, no vessels, direct vessels going to Ghana. And if you have to go by road, our big our young brother, Abijo, younger brother, Nigeria's younger brother is there that is saying, as far as he's concerned, he's not concerned with ECOWAS or LTLS. If your goods have to cross his country to another country, to another country, you have to pay custom duty. Mm -hmm. that no, no more transit charges. So you can imagine, those are things the government should do, make overtures to the government of Republic of Benin to address that issue, because it's the gateway to all other West African countries up there. And um, yeah, so Thank that you. is basically it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We have uh, a you, you. Okay, well, thank you very much. Um, I've, I've really enjoyed myself today. And all I can say is that, um, Taking from the mantra of the new government is to say, let us just be hopeful. Hopeful at this time around, hopeful that uh, the government would actually take all of these things seriously. There has been a suggestion on this um, uh, thread that um, outcomes of these webinars should form a basis for um, policy documents for the government. And uh, OBS, we've been on this for a while. Um, I, don't, I think it's all those time uh, for us to be very vigilant and uh, take the bulls by the horn. Whoever is going to be in charge of trade and uh, industry right now, I don't know, but whoever is in charge, let's try to make an inroads in there and be very hopeful that indeed this time around, this government will, will look and source for the right heads in the right places. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much. At this point, uh, please turn on your cameras. Uh, we're going to take pictures. But before then, we have uh, Johnny Simide has just 30 seconds to make his comments. Thank you very much. 30 seconds is OK. It's OK. You spent 10 already. Yeah, we, have, we are talking of incoming. Uh, sorry, we are now talking of government in power is in control. First and foremost, we have to realize that fueling or the new increase is not the only way of running business. There are so many obstacles. It is the duty of the president to tell the governors to remain in their states and give them targets and the local government chairman, vis-a-vis -vis the OPA and the MBA. Then we know we're in business. Secondly, the incoming, no, this administration has to stop leakages on resisted expenses based on what we have said is making us very uncompetitive. We have to rewind and redesign our trade policies. I can give you the example of Kenya, Malawi, and all that, when would they were rejecting our cocoa and all that. Finally, giving a man export license does not make him an exporter. We must establish an institution. Some of us are here to sacrifice. They are books. We can't have over 250 universities we are importing food. Finally, where are the players? Why do you pull them? If you go to the primary school, you have primary one, primary two, and all that. Where are the, those players at the upper layer, the mid layer, and the down screen? Finally, cost it is very important. We yeah, have to quarter pay. final, semi final, and final. <laughs> no, final cost is very important. You cannot be talking of trade. You cannot be talking of trade promotion. And you cannot be talking of trade 
without link linkages and all that to the diaspora or the ambassador. I can go into my room and bring heap of letters that I was taking to ambassadors in, in the past. Just one minute, just to um, uh, emphasize something that uh, uh, Dr. Isemede said, which has not been included in today's talk. We have been hearing one state, one local government, and uh, one state, one product, one local government, one product over the past four administrations. I think we should share this vision because it is doable, because it's easy to form an implementation around it. In addition to instructing the governors to stay in their states, I don't know how constitutional that is, it is also important to mandate them to bring one product to the export market. I think this can be one Mr. Of Femi, the... sorry, Mr. Mohammed, President Naspan, I just want to chip on, on the last point Mr. Boyede made. On the all of that is one local government, one product. I, I, I'm privileged to have been carried out the pilot scheme with Japan International Cooperation Agency when they came to Nigeria. The program actually come from Japan. In Japan, they have what they call OVO, one, one village, one product. Coming to Nigeria, since Lokagama is the last strata of administration, we now have all of We did pilot scheme, Niger and Kano. I happened to be the anchor in Niger State that time. We did the pilot scheme with JICA. It's a laudable program, and I wish, I wish our government can focus attention on it. And uh, we started with Kenya, but today Kenya has uh, overtaken us. You go to Kenya, you see wonderful what they are doing about it. Okay. So it's good for us to encourage. Please, let's capture it. Next time we'll have an uh, opportunity, I'll uh, explain more on this project, but it's a good concept. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I want to thank the technical team, the people behind the scene, bringing you this every month. So on this note, I want to thank everybody for attending. Please, as usual, we want to take the picture. This is the time to take picture or meet yourself. Say hello to everybody. Wave your hand. Oh.